Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the ATN Quick Start Series, brought to you by Quantum Networks. In this particular video tutorial, we will be configuring a Layer 4 virtual server in just four steps. Here's our agenda for the afternoon. If you look at Step 4, we're going to cover real servers, the servers group, the NAT pool group, and the actual virtual server configuration itself. Who is Quantum Networks? Simply just a bunch of good people driven by a passion for technology integrated with excellent customer service and we really mean that. We stand by that. My name is Marco Octavian and I've been working with ADCs for a very long time. Too long probably. Alright, let's configure our first Layer 4 virtual server in just four steps. Here is the lab drawing from the previous videos. Nothing has changed. And here we go. So there are four basic steps to configuring this virtual server, this Layer 4 TCP virtual server. The first step is we have to define our real servers. And you can see the actual commands listed below that. Second step is define our service group. Third step is define our net pool, at least for this particular situation. And the fourth step will be to define our virtual server. And I'm going to go over all this in more detail on the next slide. Let's also take a quick look at the drawing on the right. Uh, pretty much self-explanatory, but let's talk about it anyway. A client will make a connection to the outside interface of the A10 and connect to the virtual server on IP address 10.1.10.11 on port 80. On the inside of the A10 appliance, I'm using a NAT pool. So basically, either 10.1.20.240 or .241 will actually make a separate connection to the real servers themselves and appear local on, on, on that subnet. Step 4, virtual server. This is where the previous components you created in steps 1 through 3 are actually attached uh, to the virtual server itself. So, step one again, when we say define real servers, this will be the same as nodes or pool members on a competitor's device. It must include an object name, an IP address or DNS name, and a port. A layer 3 default health check will be applied to the real server IP addresses, and a layer 4 default health check, a TCP health check, will be applied to match the port 80 TCP command. Now, notice by looking at the command snippets on the left, I didn't specify any health checks that you can see. If you do not specify health check, by default, those two health checks come into play. And notice I said the word default more than once. Those default configurations will not show up in a show run output. You will have to run the show run with hyphen default command to see those. Very important here. Step 2. Create our service group. This is called a pool or server farm and other, other devices. It is a group of servers that fulfill a service. A service being a web service, a database service, a CRM service, and so forth. Also, the load balancing algorithm is applied here. By default, round robin is used. And once again, I use the word default intentionally. Look at the CLI command snippets on the left and you'll see that I did not specify a load balancing algorithm or a method is often called in the ATN documentation. Now, if you specify no algorithm, then once again, round robin is used by default and it will not show up in the show run output. You will need to run the show run with hyphen default command to see these default configuration uh, examples. Step 3, create your source NAT pool, often called a NAT, SNAT, so forth. You could also route here. Um, and once again, these decisions around routing, how you NAT, etc., those need to be decided near the beginning of the conversation, near the beginning of the, of the project. Those are architectural design decisions. I typically will use a NAT slash SNAT scenario most of the time. There are times when I will route directly up, but those are more specific use cases, and that's a whole different discussion, a whole different video. Step 4. Create your virtual server, also called a vServer by ATN, or a VIP, or a virtual address. Must include an object name, an IP address, and a port. The port is often called a vPort. Now, straight from the manual here, 
A virtual server is the combination of the real servers and a cost device, which together appear as a single server to the client. Enough said right there. So in just a moment, I am going to copy and paste all the CLI snippets on the left, and then we'll begin our testing. Now, of course, um, I want people to use the GUI. I want customers to use the GUI most of the time. It's, it's very easy to use. But I feel like in the beginning days, you really want to spend some time with the CLI, understand how this machine really works. This is going to make you good at this stuff. And you get down and dirty a little bit. So we're going to focus on the CLI first, and then I'll also throw in some screenshots for the GUI so you have both at your disposal. Oh, there's the GUI screenshots. Step one, create your real servers. Step two, create your service groups. Step three, define, create your, your NAT pools. Step four, create your virtual server. And you know what? Let me get my CLI snippets ready. Hang on just a moment. All right. Let me start a new putty session, SSH session to my A10 appliance. And if you notice, I'll do a show run and the config is pretty much where we left off in video number two. So configuration mode with the command conf. I'm going to paste all these in. It takes about a what? A third of a second. I'll perform a show run again. Looking pretty good. Let me change this font for you guys so you can read that better. Hang on just a moment. Okay, that's a bit better. So once again, I just paste all the commands in. They took right away. Very, very simple stuff, guys. We'll begin testing in just a moment. But let's first verify what the A10 appliance is seeing right now. So all three servers appear to be up and responding, which makes our virtual server up. Good, good. So we're going to test at the CLI with a simple bash script. And we're also going to test to a standard browser so you can see the, uh, the web server images themselves. Here's a simple script. It basically performs a curl command, uh, pauses for two seconds, and then performs it again and so forth for a couple of times. All right, wait two seconds, do it again, wait two seconds and do it one more time. So as you can see, it does appear to be low balancing correctly for the most part. It's never going to be 100% like you think it is. That's for another discussion as well. Okay, let's also jump to our browser and let's see what we have going on up there as well. All right, great. Uh, these are custom images I made. I usually make new images about every two years to have a newer OS. I like things to be fairly up to date. These are Ubuntu 1804 LTS images I put together very quickly. As you can see, they have a lot of useful information in here, along with the HTTP headers. And at the bottom of the page is a time to respond or time to load the page. So let's do this again. I have no persistence enabled, so I should get a different server every time. Server 2. Server 1. Let's do it one last time. And if anybody wants a copy of these images or the OVA, once again, as is provided, I don't mind sharing. Just send me an email and let me know. If you need help with training or, or uh, configurations, feel free to give us a call as well, of course. Okay, so as you see, uh, it's working as, as, as desired, and everything seems to be pretty straightforward. So we've tested the configuration. It does appear to work correctly. And that is it. Thank you very much for, for watching the video today. And if you have any questions, or if you want to copy the presentations, or the web server images, or if you need assistance with anything, Please feel free to reach out. Thank you again.